Hey, welcome back. This morning we're at the Book of Lamentations, and we're at chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. Let's read it, and then we'll think about it for a minute together. Standing like an enemy, he has bent his bow with his right hand like an adversary. He has slain all who were pleasing to his eye on the tent of the daughter of Zion. He has poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed her strongholds and has increased mourning and lamentation in the daughter of Judah. He has done violence to his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He has destroyed his place of assembly. The Lord has caused the appointed feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion. In his burning indignation, he has spurned the king and the priest. Chapter 2, was we're in an area where there's a, a lot of this is touching on God's anger toward his people. They, they knew better, and they were in apostasy, but he's, he hasn't abandoned them. This is a rough time because he's trying to bring them to repentance. Looking again at our passages here, what do we see? God has bent his bow. He's like an adversary. See, he's not really their adversary, not, not in the fullest sense. God's nation presented here like, like a daughter or a woman. She is in a, there's an oppositional thing going on here. And so God is kind of like an enemy. And something really interesting here is the tabernacle, the sanctuary or the, the temple, the tabernacle, all those referring to pretty much the same business. God has cut it off. I mean, this place is out of business. It's closed. The sanctuary, which you might know from the book of Exodus and the book of Leviticus and the book of Hebrews and the New Testament, this is the way God deals with sin. He's got a whole arrangement there where you bring your sacrifices and the blood goes into, is ministered through the system, and then the camp is cleansed. There's a whole system there to deal with the sins of Israel, and he's allowed it to be shut down. That's how serious God is. I mean, the people weren't really that serious about it. The people were floating around in apostasy, doing, doing crazy. And so God takes that away. It's still his system, but right now, uh, things are running in a different plan because they've been carried into captivity in Babylon. And these people who are left, they see the tabernacle alone, desolate. It must be very discouraging. Every time they look in that direction, they see the temple shattered and things not, they can't bring their sacrifices. It's, it's terrible. It's, it, for them, this would be the ultimate catastrophe. Some people have, by the way, taken this text and have had a misunderstanding. They've thought that, well, this the Sabbath was temporary. You know, it doesn't mean that much to God, so he turns it off, he turns it on at different times, and he's abandoned the Sabbath here. Well, what is what it's saying is that because the, the situation, the straits they're in is so severe, the appointed feasts and the Sabbaths, he's caused them to be forgotten in Zion. They were already forgotten. He's just closed it down. That He's just allowed that situation to be such that they would begin to feel their abandonment of God. The Sabbath is still there. It's always been there. It's still there. It's still there today. We still should observe the worship of the true God of heaven and earth on, the, on his holy and blessed seventh day. That's what the Bible teaches. And finally here, another point, he has spurned his kings and princes, which we've mentioned before, and we're going we're gonna to be mentioning it again. In his anger at the apostasy of these different institutions that God had set up in the nation for their spiritual growth and benefit, He's, he's pretty much shut all that down. The false prophets, the priests, the princes, and the rich folks, the king, you know, they're all, they're all in very, very hot water here. Well, what lessons might we draw from this besides the ones we've already sort of mentioned? Well, one thing we can focus on, friend, isn't it true that ceremonies and observances don't really matter very much if God doesn't have our heart? If he doesn't have our heart, it's all useless. God sees through it. God knows... Who's really got our heart? Is it the world or is it the God of heaven and earth? So let's be faithful to him. Let's be true to him. And then all the things in the Bible that he's marked out, the commandments of God rather than the, than the commandments of men, then those things will matter and they'll actually help us grow heavenward. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us, simple prayer, help us grow heavenward. On our own, we'll grow sideways. We'll go all wrong. Help us to grow heavenward. Work for us in this. In Jesus' name, amen. So God be with you and bless you this day.